Hello there everybody and welcome. This is going to be the start of a new tutorial mini-series featuring the Scarlet Orchard biome. We're going to play that on Prestige Level 1 and as I did in the previous parts of this series, we're going to talk about the specialties of this biome and everything we need to know about it. So we're going to go for this nice little side effect here, which is producing some meat alongside of the stone. So really no downside, it's just a benefit. And let's talk about the Scarlet Orchard real quick. It is one biome that doesn't come with specific downsides. It has an average amount of fertile soil. The trees have a interesting mixture of resources. We even can gain copper, pigment, and the usual plant fiber. And we can gain access to the archaeologist's office, and there's archaeology that we can do there as a extra mechanism to winning the game. Pretty cool stuff. We're going to explore that together. I'm going to pick up my standard package. I want the extra villagers on my embarkation and we are going to stick to some extra food. So let's see. These two packages here are really hard to choose from. We got humans on the first and we got more people on the first, but here we got beavers, but only two of them. So this is one of the situations where I nope out on the beavers even if i really do like the composition there especially these uh, 10 tools are really good but as the more people the better and since this map has again a average amount of fertile soil humans are just powerful and if it would be four beavers and two harpies by the way i would have chosen the bottom one but this is not even enough for one woodcutter so just not just not good enough I rather go for 10 people, and with some luck, the first three people that I'm vouching in for are beaver people or RPs. <laughs> okay, forest mystery time. We have a chance of doubled yield when under the influence of housing. Wonderful. We got cyst burning takes longer on prestige one, not a big deal. We got wood cutting, destroying yield during the storm. This is really annoying. This basically is a uh, designator for you don't even need to wood cut at all during storm. Then we got extra blight rod cysts for people dying during storm. And we have a faster impatience growth for blight rod cysts. So this mixture here is really trying to give us a nice little crotch kick if we rack up too many blight rod cysts. Okay, it's really very blight rod cyst centric. Anyways, welcome to the Scarlet Orchard, my friends. We have here in those trees a nice amount of, uh, of of wood as you see there there's a chance of double yield of wood that's also a reason why i don't think the beaver people are that much of a uh, mandatory thing to pick up anyways let's check out where we want to go so there's a couple of uh, danger glades around me but this one looks especially enticing as it has a very very low barrier and so i'm holding down left shift to make these configurations for both of them and we're definitely going to breach open that one here i'm holding down left shift to have a very small cursor so i want to open up that thing immediately i've made very good experiences with opening up these glades immediately as we can work our way through the problems in any situation Right, so we got now three more workers available, so let's do the regular same old, same old. So, well, <laughs> we're not going to build human houses yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. Due to the fact that I have currently unlocked all of the racial housing, we can really do a pretty nice heavy lifting later down the road with making our people extra happy with that. Okay, so let's do this. I'm laying here an extra high focus on the shelters, as we have currently a chance of uh, double the yield while housing, you know. Okay, so that was uh, probably one of the fastest glades ever. We got a withered tree event, which makes blight rod cysts spawn for dangerous glades discovered. This is for us currently really just, uh, yeah. So one cyst every 120 seconds for every two dangerous glades. So we will get a very, very low amount of uh, cysts out of that. 
and we don't even need to worry too much about it because as far as I see things, the corruption from that one cyst will not be even hot enough to hurt us yet. So we're going to get started right away with that. We gained a drizzle water geyser, we gained a large reed field, and we have small swamp wheat fields. Also, I think this one is not far away enough for another hearth, is it? Yeah, ish. We could cut out a corner here and make it happen, but uh, let's see about that. All right, so first things first, what do we have here? Grain delivery line is amazing. So I'll, I'll be definitely starting with that. Sure, it is only 12 grain per season as a minute is every season is four minutes but in the course of a year it is already 36 grain and this gives us a nice baseline of material to work with while we don't know what we're going to be working with so haha <laughs> there's a provisioner but i think i'm going to stick to the herb garden now as we have a free grain delivery line, we got herbs on the side. This is uh, looking quite good. What's not looking so good on this uh, situation now is that we don't have any basic material production whatsoever. That is not cool. So I'm spending my reroll here. Let's see. It ain't going better from here. <sighs> Jeez. The Forester's Hop, though, is... That is a really, really tough nut to crack. We already picked up a farming building now, but then along comes that one farming building that gives you free bars. <sighs> That's difficult. Truly, truly difficult. Anyways. Let's see how bad the corruption will be, but if I am not mistaken, we will get exactly two blood rot cysts out of that, which is... By all means, not good or anything, but it's also really not killing us. Okay, so order time. Six copper ingots versus six trade routes. The reward here with two extra wildfire essences is always charming. What do we have here? Complete three, three trade routes with a offer multiplier of two or higher. Mm -hmm. We would get extra planks in return for that. That is good stuff. This is a really, really good one. Okay, and rain engine installment for bars and oil versus egg delivery for flour and better pie production. Ugh. Well, I'm going to take that one as we have already the necessary tools to, to make that happen, basically. We start out with enough pipes and every run for that. So I feel like we can do that. And I also feel like we should be carving out that all here. Okay, so that is one hell of a fast start. We have already a Glade event popped open, and we're resolving it during the clearance season. We get a super powerful perk, the rare one with plus 10 carrying capacity. This gives us a real nice uh, chance of doing a lot of Glade events in that one. And there's some extra food on the side. I'm really, I'm really, really happy with what we got there. Very lucky start, in my humble opinion. Okay, so there is, like I said before, the archaeologist's office. But to build that, we're going to be needing other buildings that we don't have, um, or materials that we don't have access to yet. So we're going to delay this for now. In any way, archaeology does require repairing and is currently out of reach for us anyways. So we're going to make something like that. Here we go. In case you were flinching about, about the fact that I built the farm on some fertile soil, I said it a couple of times, but um, you might be new to these series. One farm is never able to harvest an entire field without bonuses. So if you build a little bit over them, this is not going to hurt your economy in the slightest as 
that one or two fertile fields you will be uh, not harvesting anyways. If you want to get the most out of it, you would have to build two herb gardens, one here, one there, and employ people extra during the clearance season, so you have more harvesting power. That would work. But I'm uh, too much of a lazy bum most of the time, slash I don't have the workforce for stunts like these. So, we do require, as a matter of fact, a fourth house, as we have uh, enough people to host that. And I'm currently just waiting for the event to get done, and the city to finish their decorations, their farm fields, it's just a very, very peaceful life. Due to the extra influx of 60 pieces of food after the withered tree went, we are also really off for a nice start. The only thing we're currently lacking a little bit is, of course, again, the workers. There's just one builder that's not getting the job done too fast, but uh, whatever. I'm using the time now to uh, open up the pathways and uh, get myself a nice little wood stockpile going while we're building up the, the infrastructure of the city very slow poke this time. It's okay, though, as I said. We get so much resource in out of that. There we go. They already have a... Uh, yeah, they can carry a lot now. And it really, and it really shows. I love this. So, let's check out where we will be headed next. So, I think this will be it. So, let's see, I want to weave the roads alongside, yep, that works out. And here goes, encampment bonus, bit of happier people there. Okay, so that's been dealt with, the Withered Tree event is almost over, so we're going to have this in our pocket any moment. Okay, I'm going to be moving the woodcutters camps away now, and uh, I'll be giving them a new path through this area here. So let's do this while holding left control this way. So they are going to open up a tunnel now into this direction without breaching through into the uh, into the um, clade, as this would be a little bit too much. Watch these guys carrying 15 eggs. This is such a powerful perk to gain. Plus 10 carrying capacity right from the start from a uh, game. This is a real game changer. I cannot uh, overemphasize how powerful this makes us in terms of uh, quick uh, um, glade resolution. All right, so that house ain't done yet, but luckily more builders are now available. I really need to give the give these things now a bit of a push as we've had only one worker available most of the time. That was not ideal. Storm season is upon us, and I don't even have my uh, gathering camps and all up. This is highly uh, unusual for me, but at the same time, since we have resolved the Glade event so darned early, it's it's, it's a okay. It's nothing to to worry about. The only thing I'm really sad about is that I don't have the planks together for that herb garden. It would be really amazing to have that uh, already during this season. But I think I'm asking for too much to have a uh, fully operational farm during the next um, clearance season already. Um, drizzle. But we can actually do by focusing the right things. So let's make that crude workstation a high focus thing. I mean, this thing only requires two planks. This should be doable. Let's see. So yeah, Harpy Resolve is low. Let's kick that down to uh, zero um, hostility and see how many people can we re-employ. Yeah, well, two, at least two woodcutters during the storm ain't the worst. And with that amount of uh, sheer workforce now, we should be able to build that stuff quite quickly. So, Swamp Wheat Field goes down here. And yeah, just by the uh, wheat delivery line, we have already gained a really nice amount of grain just for free. Love this. Okay, so we're going to put people there. And I'll put the planks now on a priority of uh, one, so it's going to be prioritized above everything else. I'll be making fabric out of plant fibers as we have a steady influx of these. And same goes for the bricks out of stone. 
That's one of the things I've only real, recently really uh, realized slash discovered that when you have the options, like for example here, if you have plant fiber, a steady influx, and you can select to, to use leather, you actually shouldn't. You should really decide which material you do your fabric out of. And this goes also for a stone. And you should always try to make the decision depending on what's uh, the easiest available material for you. Because we could use that leather somewhere else. We could make water skins out of that or whatever we can do only out of leather. There are a couple of things that can be only made with leather. So at the end of the day, your basic building materials should always be made out of the stuff that you ha can super easy get your hands on. At least that's my opinion. Okay, so yeah, we uh, we are we are not going to be able to fertilize the fields, but I think we're going to be able to build the farm at least. So let's force the delivery right away. We still have so many workers available. I really dislike that. Let's put them into worker camps. Oh, I did a horrible job here. I'm very sorry. Anyways, we got some stones, we got some eggs, and uh, with the delivery of the planks, we will finish the farm, and yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's fast enough, I think. So, we ain't got no beavers, as it seems. We have only lizards. Well, I like this package more, as we currently have no issues with food whatsoever, and the goods that they carry are just very attractive in the current situation. So, frequent caravans. Her patience grows slower every time we finish a trade route. That is amazing. Market shift plan. Um, more trade routes, but no traders until we've done that. Mm, well, and economic migration. No. We're going to take the uh, frequent caravans thing, as I think this is amazing for our city. It'll give us so much flexibility to work with. I like the idea of that. As slow impatience growth is so... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a good resource to work with. So, top-notch priority on the farm. As I really want to get that thing going this year, not next year. And more woodcutters. So there's been no dead, uh, dead people due to blight rot cysts. So I think we've been uh, we've been okay. Mm, okay. So we're now on a really really nice spot. The only thing that bothers me is that this farm is getting done way too slowly. But, well, I still think that we did a really decent job with manning that farm in the drizzle uh, season of year two. I think this is outright good work. So I'm going to reduce the amount of workers on these stations now all over the board, as I want to have woodcutters and one builder. Well... It is what it is, but at least the foragers camp has a bonus from the human production, so that's a that's a good benefit. And well, I'd say we can also now get started on the archaeologist's office now that we have these materials as well. Okay, I deem that a wonderful start. We're doing really really good here so far. On the order side, we haven't done anything, of course, which is a little bit worrisome, but uh, don't you, don't you worry. So we're going to take the trade route uh, thing here. I mean, advanced leather working is not necessarily something I'm looking uh, into as I, I need that, but it is, uh, it is quite useful. So here, eight for the lizard clan. That is just so good. More um, goodwill from the, from the people. And provisions are just something that we're going to have in a uh, large amount now. Okay, with year three, I think we're uh, really in a good position to get going. As a matter of fact, yeah, well, let's see there, we uh, 
currently use up more wood so darn fast because of this uh, all of this building that we're doing. These buildings, they, they all eat up wood, especially the crude workstation, eats wood and uh, gives back so few planks. So I'm, I rather am careful about this as I really don't want to uh, destroy my early game. Hey Zork, what up man? Let's see, does he have something that we really, really want right now? As a matter of fact, not really. That's a, that's a pity. But yeah, maybe, maybe that. Yeah. Now you what? We're, we're going to build or buy our way into the planks. Simply so we don't have to waste that much wood anymore. So I'm going to fill the, the offer with these byproducts of the trees, as I know that these things, we are going to have so many of them. And now the, the crude workstation doesn't need to make as many planks in a uh, horrible fashion anymore. So let's get back to this. So as much as I want the forester's hut, we're going to pick up the cookhouse, as this will provide for us lots of food that we're going to need. So here on the weaver or the brickyard question, I'm going to vote here for the brickyard as it is an alternative access route for crystallized dew. And I want to mention that crystallized dew is made out of herbs. So we have a decent chance to get a production cycle going there as well. So I think this is good enough. Apart from that, sadly Zork, my man, we are not going to do business here, but I don't want to make it sound that badly. As a matter of fact, it's actually been a really good trade with Zork, as the extra planks will help us out a lot. They, they really will. So, let's build that cookhouse. I think I'm going to go down this, ro uh, this road. Build the cookhouse, build the brickyard, make a new road go down here. Okay, so far so good. The only thing, we are low on workers. It's always like that. Early game, you can't have enough workers, and uh, once the early game is over, you really don't know where to put your people anymore. Okay, the archaeologist's office is getting done now here as well. And due to our uh, nice uh, shopping spree at Zorks, we have now the necessary material as well. So here we go. Of course, that's uh, that that's how it has to be. My farmers now manage to harvest the entire field because I I said they couldn't. They kind of like have to. Uh, I seem to have provoked them. Jokes aside, they just started very late this year, and that's uh, how that happened. Okay, so... Let's do... Let's see... We can only, if I remember correctly, select one of these upgrades, and... Revealing a archaeological discovery is locking me out from the other upgrades. You can reveal these uh, archaeological discoveries, if I remember correctly, on your own by just uh, clobbering open glades. So the Scarlet Orchard is a very expedition-friendly um, biome, so to speak. Okay, so we're going to have to use Insect and Root. Brilliant. What can we do here? Well, biscuits will be possible too once we have that done, but uh, not for this year. All right. I mean, for this year, we are so understaffed that I'll be just letting it ride until the next year breaks on. It's totally fine. We're going to be opening up a new blade in the, in the beginning of the next year. As there are so many things that I want to get done. Most importantly, I want to start stuffing packs with provisions, finally. Alright, 
So the brickyard is also done. That's really, really good. And as you see here, pottery. So by just stating that I don't want my bricks being made out of clay, I let open the path to pottery. This is just what I'm what I was talking about before. So let's see. I bet that we won't be stomaching this. Yeah, we don't. So we don't have a building that would make the uh, RPs happier. But we do have a building where we can put in a lizard dude, and voila, nobody's unhappy anymore. The benefit of that is that we can keep cutting through the storm because we are not on the rotting wood stage. So, let's keep cutting, boys. I'd love to cut into the next glade at the same time, but we won't, as this would create hostility more hostility than we can't stomach and this would lead to us unemploying woodcutters and I just realized what I'm saying this is nonsense we should be opening up that next plate absolutely as we do need that new territory and archaeology is really powerful and to lower the hostility we're just going to unemploy another woodcutter and uh, that's that okay mm. That one worker that I got left, I'm going to order this wonderful fella here to make his provision packs. These will be made for starters with the herbs that we got until we have a better usage for them. That's a good one. I'm limiting it nevertheless to 10 as I don't want to overburden my, my industry and keep those herbs available for other things as well. All right. So impatience ain't any problem whatsoever so far. So I'm okay with that. We will need to do something about the uh, forest's hostility though. So I really hope that we're going to grab a uh, cornerstone in that regard quite soon. And here we go. So funny enough, I didn't manage to smack it all open. So <laughs> lucky us. And we got ourselves a temple ruin. That is cool. Sacrament of the Flame is none of my favorite uh, effects, but it allows us to give religion and education, and it's dirt cheap. So we might be uh, considering that. And we got ourselves another Wither Tree event. All right. That is uh, pretty tame. It forces me, though, nevertheless, now to build a Blight, uh, a blight Station for the upcoming year. As I really get a uh, uneasy feeling now, if I would be uh, leaving that another year unchecked, I I don't feel well about that. So, salvaging this place would be providing a lot of material to work with, but rebuilding it is for me the more exciting alternative here. So let's order that uh, blight post right away. So we can't forget it accidentally, and we're uh, we're going to squander our first archaeology upgrade for that. So as you see here, we cannot pick those anymore now, but we have that now. So you can find them on your own if you'd wanted to. You can, of course, uh, repeat that. Or you find them yourself and you gain some extra cool rewards, upgrades, stuff like that. It's up to you. So, peasant supplies! Oh, that's pleasant supplies. So, that means we don't really need to worry about uh, provision packs at all anymore, so I'm going to unemploy that bugger right away, because we're uh, just going to receive now newcomers, and that brings us a pleasant supplies. So, I'm going to be picking up the larger package of people now, as we really do need the extra the extra workforce now to finally get us started there's so many buildings that we need to uh, that we need to staff out it's, uh, it's a shame if we don't have the necessary people for that okay so insects and eggs are now off limits so let's do that So, because that's what we're making our scores out of. We're going to limit that to 100 scores. That's a lot. We uh, will need 
will need a while until we are able to fulfill that hunger for scores. But, uh, yeah. So we'll require two more houses. And uh, we should totally get ourselves at least the four woodcutters back on the board. Okay, that leaves us with one builder yet again. Ah, uh, well. I mean, on the bright side, the uh, withered tree will be gone soonish. And then we got workers back. So. But, uh, yeah, I could pick up the aid for the lizard plan, but I won't. As I really want to be careful with uh, getting the um, population up without uh, controlling the numbers here. So I'm going to unemploy a third, one of the one of the woodcutters. So we have now three woodcutters. That's okay. We don't need more of that. Okay, my good friends, that's that for today. We're going to be continuing in the next episode when we're starting to do some archaeology. And let's see, I'll be definitely building my second hearth in that time, as we did a really nice uh, job in expanding our business. I think we just spawned our first blight rot cysts uh, in, uh, overall. Anyways, my good friends, we're going to be continuing next time. Drop me your comments down below, a thumbs up would be wildly appreciated, and as usual, there is subscriptions that I'd really love to see, there is my description box where you can find a lot of links to knock yourself out, and there is, last but not least, also links to Discord, to Twitch, where I stream Fridays and Sundays in the evening hours of the European time zone, and of course, Patreon, Paypal, buy me a coffee, and uh, I'd be really, really happy if you'd gave them a go, and check out my channel membership system as well, allowing you to preview all the things that will be released over the next days. So, that all being said, I appreciate hanging you out until the very end, thanks a lot for supporting the channel, and yeah, I hope you had a good time, and I'm looking forward to the rest of this one, as the Scarlet Orchard biome is, in all honesty, one of my favorite biomes. See you there. Bye-bye.